The eight small suboccipitals are the deepest muscles of the upper posterior neck. To outline the suboccipital's location, find the superior nuchal line of the occiput, the transverse processes of C1, and the spinous process of C2. The upper fibers of the trapezius can also be used as a marker. So when we say that the suboccipitals are the deepest muscles of the upper posterior neck, what exactly do we mean? Well, let's show you. First of all, if we look at the back of the neck, there we can see the most superficial muscle, and that's the trapezius. And then if we take that away, we can see the next layer, which is the splenius capitis. And then deep to that, we see the rather thick semispinalis capitis. And then finally, deepest of all, right there we see the suboccipitals. Eight little muscles tucked right in there at the base of the skull. Good. So now that we have an idea of generally where they're located, let's isolate some landmarks to really find their lo exact location. First, we've got the superior nuchal line of the occiput running right along here at the base of the head. Now, my partner's bald, which is convenient for me, but even if he had a big head of hair, I can locate it because it runs right across pretty much the top of the ear or the middle of the ear right here. And I can set my fingers right along that space, and there are those superior nuchal lines, one on this side, one on this side. And it's, they sort of serve as the shoreline between the bones of the cranium and the muscles of the neck. And there we see a really nice example of the external occipital protuberance. Okay, so that's one landmark that's going to help us. Not because the suboccipitals attach here. They actually attach about an inch and a half below. But that's a nice reference point to just start from. The second landmark is going to be the transverse processes of C1, which is located by finding the mastoid process here, and then just slipping my finger inferiorly and anteriorly a little bit. And using the broad finger pads, I'm going to just feel for a deep bony knob right there. And right there and here on the other side is going to be the TBPs of C1, and that's going to be our second landmark to isolate the suboccipitals. And the last one will be the spinous process of C2. And there, I'm going to just set my finger pads here on the posterior neck. I'm probably about, oh, two, two and a half, three inches below the level of the external occipital protuberance. And right there is a subtle mound of the spinous process of C2. It's pretty easy to find since C1 doesn't have a spinous process. So we've got the spinous process of C2, the TVPs of C1, and there the superior nuchal lines. And all of those will serve as references for where we can find the suboccipitals. And again, we can see them right there. Okay, now if I wanted to get my hands on these muscles, instead of actually working my fingers through the trapezius and these deeper muscles here, I'm going to actually just ask my partner to raise his head slightly. And there I can find that edge of the trapezius right there and relax. And I'm going to just set my fingers right there along the edge of the trapezius and work my fingers into this tissue. Now again, I don't feel any of the specific bellies of the suboccipitals. But as a mass, as a group, their mass and their density can definitely be felt right in there. And last but not least, I want to show you one thing that's interesting on my partner. Go ahead and just kind of tuck your chin a little bit. And here, we have a great example of what runs in between the two sides of the suboccipitals and the other muscles of the neck, and that's the ligamentum nuchae, spanning from that external occipital protuberance down to the spinous process of C7. Just a really great example of that band of connective tissue that sort of spans right up the back of the neck. Good. Go ahead and relax. So with that in mind, let's now turn our partner supine and see what we can find in that position. So with my partner in a supine position, there's a simple little maneuver I can do to access the suboccipitals. I'm going to just cradle the head with my hands, and I'm going to find that superior nuchal line either side of that external occipital protuberance, that big knob on the back of the head. And then I'm going to just 
slowly sink my fingers inferiorly down toward the suboccipitals. And as my fingers sort of descend into the back of the neck, sort of rounding and following the round surface of the cranium, there I'm going to just penetrate through those superficial muscle bellies, the trapezius and whatnot, and my fingers are going to find themselves sort of resting on the density of those suboccipitals. And that's just a little maneuver you can do to just let the weight of the head and the neck allow your fingers to sink right into these muscles.